The Elsevier Global Medical News Podcast is brought to you by Elsevier. I'm Sherry Boshert, reporting for Elsevier Global Medical News. Dr. Annette Wagner is a pediatric dermatologist at Northwestern University in Chicago. Each month, she sees 65 to 75 infants with hemangiomas, and of these, 28 to 30 have painful ulcerations. About 12 times a month, she uses pulse dye laser to treat these ulcerations. Dr. Wagner spoke at a meeting of the Society for Pediatric Dermatology in San Francisco, and after her talk, we asked her to share some thoughts and tips for clinicians on managing ulcerated hemangiomas. About 6% of the general population will have a hemangioma develop. They're more common in girls than they are in boys, more common in preterm infants than term infants, but they occur very broadly in the general population, so it's a, a common problem to see in a pediatric derm practice. The most recent studies have shown about 17% of all hemangiomas ulcerate, and typically that happens in the early growth or proliferative phase of the lesions, which is between birth and about six months of age. Many of these ulcerated hemangiomas occur in the groin. They occur in creases under the necks, under the arms, in in the lips, um, and segments of the face, and, and pain is always a very important part of this, as well as risk of infection, which can occur, obviously, when the skin is broken down. There's a real paucity of information in the medical literature when it comes to how to manage these hemangiomas, and um, one of the purposes of this meeting was to try and just have a conversation about what is what we're doing as a group, since many of these children are, are, are taken care of by pediatric dermatologists. Far and away, the mainstay for managing an ulcerated hemangioma is good wound care. Um, These become very crusted, um, and you have to get the crust or the eschar out of the center to allow for wound healing underneath. And we use a lot of of dressings, uh, things like ultra-thin duoderm and mepatel, topical antibiotics. But certainly for the more severe ulcerated hemangiomas that don't get better with the good wound care protocols, we rely on things like pulse dye laser to try and stimulate some wound healing in the base of these ulcerated tumors. The most important thing about using laser is to understand the power of that tool to actually injure and not just to heal. So if you're going to use laser, it's important, number one, that you're lasering a debrided surface, that you're not lasering a surface that is filled with um, fibrin or or material that you're not going to be able to penetrate through. We don't truly know how laser works, but it's a biologic effect in that it seems to stimulate the production of cytokines in the wound that probably aid in healing of the hemangioma, so you've got to be able to laser living tissue. So the first tip is you've got to clean the wound base out before you start. It's very painful, so we use um, either topical anesthetic creams and have to do so with great caution in the pediatric population because of absorption of those materials, or, or oral Tylenol, and sometimes Tylenol with codeine is used. And when you laser, um, it's important to cover the area immediately after the laser because of the pain that's associated with the procedure as well. We don't know the optimal interval to do laser treatments, but probably it's in the area of two to four weeks um, to try and stimulate good wound healing. And it's never used as a solitary or first-line treatment. It should always be used as a secondary treatment for a hemangioma that's not healing with good wound care. We spend a lot of time trying to help parents as well as babies when we deal with these problems. If you can imagine being a a mother of a newborn who's awake all night because every time they they pee in their diapers, they're peeing into an open ulcer in the groin and they're crying constantly. They often don't feed as well. Sometimes they don't even grow as well. Um, So when the mother or father come in with this young child, the first thing that you have to do is, is... kind of discuss with them that the treatment you may offer if you're doing something like pulse dye laser is also painful. And to try and help them get through that often, what we'll do is laser the parent. Just give them one pulse of the laser on the arm to make them understand that although it looks terrible to hold a crying child down and to injure an already painful area, in truth the laser is not tremendously painful. It's a very quick procedure from which they gain tremendous pain relief. So the one thing that seems quite clear about use of laser in the management of ulcerated hemangiomas is in about 24 hours after the laser, there's a great pain relief for the majority of infants, and that gets the parent and the child a good night's sleep. So although it's hard to go through, um, I think taking the time to help them understand the situation and the benefits it offers can really be worthwhile. 
The Clermin gel or Regranix um, is indicated for diabetic ulcers and for healing chronic wounds in diabetic ulcers. Last year in 2008, the FDA or, um, issued a black box warning in the use of this gel. It's associated with an increased mortality in patients who have cancers in whom more than three tubes or um, 15 grams is applied to an open wound. It is not, however, associated with an increased incidence of malignancy. And we have been using this gel um, as another tool to try and heal ulcerated hemangiomas as, as a community in pediatric dermatology for over a year. The black box label, I don't think, impacts what we do. Our, our patient population is not one with cancer, so we're not dealing with patients who come into this with malignancy. And that's really the group that the FDA is most concerned about. But we are using something in very little children that's off-label without a lot of data. What, what we know about it is it stimulates fibroblast proliferation. It seems to help the base of the wound to heal as well as causes some neogenesis or some blood vessel growth into the area that's not healing well. And it, it can be very effective in a subset of population, especially patients that have a lot of fibrin in the wound of their hemangiomas that, that like a chronic diabetic ulcer, aren't healing for that reason. Typically what we'll do is debreed the ulcer and then apply the gel just once daily in very minuscule amounts to the surface. And the response rates um, in the small series that's been published are very impressive with healing noted as, as soon as, as on an average about 10 days after beginning daily application of the gel. So I think we need more information. Um, we don't know a lot about it, but I think it's one of the things that may be greatly, greatly helpful to us in the future. Dr. Wagner said she has no potential conflicts of interest related to the topic she discussed. For Elsevier Global Medical News, I'm Sherry Boshert.